Good evening, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, my name is Aaron Weiss, and I'm on the board of Big Medium. Um, thank you for coming to today's professional development workshop. Uh, as you may know, um, these Creative Standard Professional Development Series workshops address topics identified by members of our creative community. These workshops invite experts on various issues to educate artists on best practices and uh, for successful strategies. You can view an archive of previous workshops on our website. Um, tonight, I am very excited to be here with Robin Williams to share helpful tips on how to create an interesting and inviting virtual studio visit. We, we really want this to be as interactive as it can be in this format. Uh, we had to do this as a webinar since so many people registered, but please ask questions at any point and we'll try to get to everyone. Um, Robin is an assistant curator at the Contemporary Austin, and I'll have her introduce herself. Thanks, Erin. Hi, everyone in the black void who we can't see, between <laughs> that we can see your faces, but um, good to be here with you virtually uh, to discuss this new life that we live in, where we do all virtual studio visits and everything else. Um, so I guess, yeah, like Aaron said, we really would like for this to be interactive and I'd love to hear from you questions, feedback, thoughts about your experiences that you'd like to share. So I'm hoping that everyone will feel comfortable to use the chat feature or ask questions in the Q&A as we go along. Um, okay, I'm gonna get started now. Um, oh, Aaron, I guess you're controlling, do you mind? Would you like the... Uh... Screen share? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, so I wanted to just kind of start with a fun collage of images of a variety of studio visits that I've conducted, just as a way to say, you know, if you're asking the question, what is a studio visit? there really is no singular answer to that question. Um, studio visits are as varied as there are individuals and that's what makes them so fun. So um, yeah, there's really no one size fits all. And again, that's why I'm hoping that we can really get feedback from the participants so we can also tailor this um, to what really you need to, to hear. Um, okay. so. What is a studio visit? Why do we do them though? Essentially, I guess from my perspective as a curator, I approach artists for studio visits or sometimes an approach by artists for studio visits, um, occasionally for a specific curatorial project, but much more often than that, um, I'm do doing studio visits with artists just out of curiosity to get to know artists in my community or elsewhere who I'm interested in and just to learn about their practice, to see works in progress, and to hear from them directly about their work. It's a much different experience, as you know, as artists, to, to really be the one to communicate about your work versus, you know, reading things online or, or only viewing on a website. So, so yeah, it's really about kind of creating a human connection as it is about seeing your art. Um, that being said, uh, oh, sorry, we'll go back. I have a few more. Okay. Before we get there. That being said, uh, I know that like for East, you're gonna be dealing with people who are coming in to your studios for all kinds of reasons. Um, some might be curators, but other people will just have a general curiosity. They may or may not know very much about art. You might have gallerists or collectors. So you'll have a wide variety of audiences and, um, I, I think I would just encourage people to kind of express curiosity about your visitors as a way of trying to get a feel for who your audience is and then trying to be sort of nimble in your in your way that you are able to talk about your art to adjust to what what your visitor might where they might be in their in their life. Um, and also, you know, why do studio visit from an artist artist perspective? Um, they're a great opportunity for you to not only, you know, reach new audiences for your work or reconnect with people who have had a longstanding interest in your work, but also to get feedback 
that can be useful to you and as you continue to develop and move into new areas of your work. So, um, at, you know, bottom line, it should be fun, it should be engaging, and hopefully you feel good and inspired by talking about your art and sharing it with, with other people. Um, and, you know, just to go back to my first point about there's no one size fits all for a studio visit. If you kind of look around online, there are a lot of like, how to do a studio visit things, which is what we're doing now. And I'll try to share some helpful do's and don'ts to the best of my ability, but um, also just, I think it's a, absolutely essential to recognize that, um, that really you're the one driving this thing and uh, in, in conversation with your interlocutor and that should really be the fuel that shapes sort of what happens in your studio visits. So, um, okay, that being said, let's go on to a few helpful tips. Okay, so just if you're starting off and maybe some people are less comfortable doing studio visits in general, much less one online. Um, so just some guideline questions that uh, you might want to ask yourself in helping to structure your thoughts and presenting your work. So really basic questions that most people visiting your studio, no matter what their perspective is, are going to be curious about. Um, just what kinds of materials do you work with? Uh, what kinds of artistic processes do you engage? What questions or, or ideas do you explore in your work? What do you hope to affect through your work, either in viewers or in the world? Um, if you have more of a social practice oriented art, um, for example, the next one. Um, uh, people are always curious also about an artist's trajectory and how their recent works are related to past works. So kind of what has led you to this current moment? You don't have to be exhaustive. Um, but just to give a sense of kind of where you're at, what's generating your ideas or what's motivating your current, your current interests. Um, and then in the same, um, along the same lines, what's on your horizon? Are you interested in expanding into new mediums or are your interests taking a different direction? Are you comfortable sharing work that's not only sort of recent or even in progress, but even something that might be in a really nascent stage of development? Um, in general, I would say that um, the more you're comfortable and sort of willing to share, it's usually the better. Um, it's just, you know, great for conversation and people like to kind of partake in, in that aspect or, or feel that they're partaking in an aspect of an artist's practice as they're developing a work. And, and you might get great feedback or great ideas that really do help to generate um, some, some inspiration for you. Um, and then I've been doing a lot of studio visits with artists, you know, since March and especially early on in the pandemic, um, but, but ongoing, uh, people have been, many people have been pretty dramatically affected by uh, all varieties of what's been happening. So if there are aspects of your work that have been derailed, maybe you've lost access to your studio or you suddenly find yourself homeschooling your kids or um, you just feel kind of out of whack because you're reevaluating what's important to you or how you want your work to function in the world or something like that. And maybe none of those things are relevant to you at all and that's okay too. But I think that at this moment, especially, um, I, I, I think artists who I've had studio visits with recently have, have had some kind of, um, have really enjoyed to sort of speak openly about those things and how they're affecting them in this moment. And sometimes we can together explore or might be able to suggest other artists who they might have a good connection with, maybe they do or don't know them, it's just kind of um, a moment where people are feeling a need for community and support. And I, I think that you should also feel comfortable in, in asking for that in these contexts, if it feels appropriate to you. Um, so a few friendly reminders uh, as well. Um, one is, is practical, which is that 
um, viewing art online is not the same as viewing it in person. So um, you, I just encourage you to put thought into what is the best presentation strategy for your work. And it's going to vary depending on the specifics of your work. But, you know, for example, if, if you're creating work that is digitally based or sort of born online, born in a digital platform, online studio visits are going to feel very natural and they won't change the effect of your work that much. But if you're working in more traditional mediums like painting or sculpture, you're going to lose a lot. Um, and just remember that virtual art audiences can't get a sense of things like scale or materiality or texture um, because the screen basically makes everything appear digital. Um, so just trying to the best of your ability to find some way to show that to people or at least to you know tell them about it. Um, just briefly, I had a studio visit with a sculptor recently who had a, his sculpture hanging on the wall behind him and he's sitting as I'm sitting here close to the computer. And I had no sense at all of this thing's scale. I thought maybe he could reach out his hands and sort of, it would be maybe six feet long, but he walked back there and stood next to it. And he's a big person. And all of a sudden you see, oh, wow, this sculpture is huge. It was more than 50, you know, 14 feet long. So it really makes a difference. And it's just something to keep in mind. Okay, next. Um, artists work in all kinds of spaces, like I also showed you in that collage at the beginning. Um, some are working in professional studio spaces, some are working in home studio spaces, that might be a shared space, um, or any kind, you know, there's all, all variety of spaces that artists work in, and all of this is fine and good. Um, and I would just remind you to straighten up a little bit, uh, try to avoid any Zoom faux pas that we have all heard about from friends or even worse in the news. Um, Aaron's gonna speak more about, about really crafting your work for online presentations. So I'll just kind of leave it at that. Okay, so this is a, a saying that I've taken from my PhD advisor who is truly one of the most generous people I've ever known in my life. So when she says, be selfish, it's, it's a, it's meant to really be about like, do the work that it takes to get the kind of result or feedback that will be most useful to you. So that I think for, you know, for me and my work, if I'm trying to get feedback on writing or thoughts or whatever it is, is always the aspect that really takes the most work. Um, so, you know, reflecting on your practice, reflecting on where you are in it, where you'd like to go, what kinds of feedback you're curious about and finding ways to present your work. And again, this is gonna vary for everyone. There is no prescription around this. It really takes a kind of um, digging down into yourself and also probably experimentation. Um, and and also, also listening. So when you're having these visits with all kinds of people, um, it could be just as valuable to kind of think about the kinds of questions that they're asking you or the kinds of interests that they're expressing and whether or not those questions or those interests are really yours or, or, or not. And that can also help you to think about how you are presenting your work in, in different you know, future contexts and how you might how you might prefer to reshape or reframe. So one great thing about studio visits is really that it empowers you, like I said before, as the artist to um, shape the presentation of your work. And um, there's a lot of, um, I wouldn't, I don't know if I, if pressure is the right word, but some expectation um, of artists in the last few decades really to be very um, eloquent around critical insight into your own work and into your own practice. And um, I don't think that that is always hmm, something you have to push yourself. Um, and we can talk about this perhaps during Q&A to make things more specific, but um, to do, do put some thought into kind of the way that you want to present your work um, or a lot of thought into that. But also at the same time, I would say don't be compelled to over theorize or to 
over explain even when people are asking you questions if those aren't really your questions you can also begin to think about why not and that'll also help you to um, really get that kind of uh, self-reflective feedback that will be important and informative going for going um, forward um, and bottom line uh, studio visits are human interactions and um, I really if, if I've said one thing three times, or if you only remember one thing, I think it is just this. Um, show up, be yourself with curiosity and generosity. And um, I, I think you can hope for that in, in your visitors as well. I always try to, to basically show up, be authentic, be curious, be generous in my feedback and my questions um, in my conversation. And um, really the best studio visits are the ones that have that kind of um, mutual generosity on both sides. So it's really a kind of um, very open-ended way of approaching a, a how-to, but that's my best advice. That's great. Um... I'm, I'm here to give a little more technical advice, but my background's in documentary filmmaking. And so, you know, I've interviewed hundreds of people and trying to pull out stuff that is genuine um, and, and trying to make it feel and come across authentic. So I think you know, Robin, you really summed it up there and, and whatever, there's no formula for these. So we're just trying to give you loose advice and you, you have to really decide uh, what's gonna work for you. But my biggest advice is to keep it simple. Don't overthink it. This has really got to be using tools that you're comfortable with and uh, technically, and you don't need to stress too much about this because everybody's in the same situation and uh, you really just have to make it feel like it comes from the heart. So um, I recommend using a camera you're comfortable with, whether this is going to be recorded and edited later, um, or in, I mean, shown online, or whether it's going to be a Zoom and you're doing this live, um, use a camera or use your laptop, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, the latest iPhones are really great. Um, you know, put yourself in selfie mode. I recommend having a tripod if you can, or some or keeping the camera stable. I don't recommend walking around um, while looking at yourself with the camera. Um, really want to compose the frame. Have a quiet environment is is really key. Uh, dog barking in the background is is not ideal. It can be very distracting. Um, and if you have AirPods or head or headphones that have microphone, that's really ideal because people want to. It, it's proven that people are more likely to watch something with bad video quality, but they'll turn it off a lot quicker if uh, there's bad audio quality. So audio is more important than video. Um, lighting is key if you're photographing your work i'm sure you know that um, to make sure there's a light on your face um, make sure there's light on your work make sure you compose the frame how you want it to look for people um, editing can take years to to really learn and master so if you're not comfortable doing it i don't recommend trying to learn to do editing for these for these studio visits um, i recommend trying to make self-contained videos so having some kind of loose script or an outline or bullet points of things you want to cover based on the advice Robin has given you, I think is really good. You could, instead of making a 30 minute video, you can make a few different, you know, three to five minute videos that, that, that tackle different specific topics. Um, and kind of going off what she's already said, I, you know, you really got to connect with the people, with, with your audience and uh, as much as possible as you can these days with given our limitations, but um, think of previous studio tours you've done or, or previous studio visits. Uh, what what questions have people asked? What what um, impact did it have on them or you? What were the positive conversations you around your work that you had? What really moved people? And try to tap into that. Um, you really have to make this useful useful for yourself more than anything, um, but when it's useful for you it'll also be useful for your patients so they, because they can see who you are uh, um, who you really are um, 
this is for you now, but also in the future. And it can be, a, this can also be, whether it's the webinar, a Zoom that you're recording or a video that you're, a short video that you're making with your phone, it can be a useful tool for years to come. Um, and just think about relevant stories and, and inspiration, um, things that, that feel authentic to you. Um, I think there's, um, Carol has asked a few questions and we're gonna share this deck. So feel free to take photos as we're going along, uh, but we'll share the deck, um, the big medium website uh, next to the archived video. Uh, but we'd like to open up to questions to see where you guys are. Um, Carol has asked about, um, as a photographer, um, if your your studio maybe not that great looking, any tips for making it look better? I think just um, picking a corner of your your house that's ideally not um, a kitchen or a bedroom, something that has a you can make a background for yourself that just uh, looks decent, and that's where you can film yourself, um, and then you could overlay uh, images your your photographs or show them uh, turn the camera around and show them um, on your on, on your desk um, also asking about formal style visits um, i think a mixture of formal and casual can be good but really whatever you want to want people to see uh, let's see budget lighting hacks um, Work lamps from Home Depot are good. They're just kind of clip-on work lamps. They can uh, clip onto the back of a chair. Ring lights are a really good solution you can get on Amazon. Uh, your phone can go actually inside the ring light if you're filming yourself, or you turn your, your phone around and the ring light is facing your work. Um, and again, I, I recommend having a tripod sit because it can be awkward and heavy otherwise. Um, let's see. Thoughts on talking over video. Would a track uh, on top of painting in a video work to add context? I definitely think so. Um, of having a voiceover that, of you talking over your work would be really good, talking through your portfolio or walking up to a piece and wanting to talk more about that piece. I think that's really great. Um, but again, having a microphone would be really good. And, and maybe practicing once before walk around the room pretending like you're filming and um, and practice the, the story uh, just a little bit or create some bullet points, but uh, but you don't want to rehearse it too much. Um, Robin, I want to, can you talk about some of the best types of studio visits you've had something, uh, maybe one that's been more than just showing recent work and how it's, how it's felt to you? You're on mute. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I, well, I think, you know, just to reiterate what I said before, the best studio visits for me are always the ones that were, and also what you said, Aaron, where um, you're feeling a kind of connection on both sides. Um, and so uh, I'm also looking at the chat. Uh, I see yeah, yeah. from Cheyenne Weaver, mm -hmm. um, who is asking about opening studio visits to many people through Zoom and maybe qu taking questions through chat. Yeah, so when I was sort of talking, I had in mind a kind of one-on-one -on -one or small group model, but yeah, for East, you're, you might be doing um, more like live events. I think people are doing a variety of different um, formats. Um, and I think that Cheyenne, you know, like that would be a good option for you, like to present basically kind of a narrated PowerPoint or something even would be fine where you're basically doing kind of an artist talk, um, hitting those same basic points that I kind of outlined before um, and then taking questions through chat or depending on how many people you have, maybe you're able to do a kind of more live um, question and answer. I think was always nice. I think another way you could do that is take questions on Instagram or through your email list and um, you could compile a big list of questions from people um, if you didn't want to necessarily do it live, and then you could record a video where you're answering answering a lot of those questions. Um, I mean, the, the the trouble with Zoom is you have to schedule these things, and actually getting people to attend with the schedules, with their schedules, can be challenging. So you might not get everybody you want, who, you know, all the interaction you'd like. So you could compile the 
compile the questions and then answer them in a video that you release on whatever channel you you using. Yeah, the only the only trouble with doing videos is that you're not going to get the two way interaction um, in in live time, which is I I really think just the heart of what is great about doing studio visits for both artists usually and uh, curators or people who are interested in the work. So just maybe thinking sure. about a way of creating maybe something stable that lives on your website, like a video, and then also hosting more more kind of um, real time events. Definitely. See, Timothy is asking if I'm going to put together a video to show online that includes a statement, um, views of a studio, the materials, etc., photos of work. How long is optimal? Five to ten minutes. What do you think, Robin? Um, I think five, yeah. uh, if it's a video, yeah. You know, um, there are, you, I'm sure most people know about Art 21 um, on PBS, which is a long running series of basically video studio visits with artists that are very nicely professionally produced and so on. So it's not the same um, production quality, but it's a nice model, maybe just to think about kind of how to, televise your work in, in a kind of way. They're usually um, short, short segments. Jean's asking about um, if you do create a few short videos, can they be submitted to Big Medium? We'll have to get, get back to you on that. Um, I don't think anybody here can answer that definitively, but um, if that can be actually included in the art artist listing, but artist listings link back to your website. And so um, you can figure out a way to, to host that on your channels. Um, I, tips, go ahead. No, I didn't mean to jump in. Oh, okay. Um, somebody asked, can you share tips on best microphones for this purpose? There are a lot of microphones you can find um, on Amazon that connect to your phone. Um, having one that clips your shirt that's right next to your mouth is always great, or something that's pointed right at your mouth. Otherwise, um, you know, using AirPods works really well or any, any uh, headphones with a microphone can, can be a good lo-fi approach that's, that's good quality. And Carol's asking about doing a giveaway. I think that's a cool idea. Um, I, I guess I, what I'm interpreting, interpreting is maybe kind of raffle or something for people who come um, to come and do a, a visit with you during East and then maybe you could give away a small, a small thing like a, a small drawing or photograph or whatever that'd be fun yeah yeah if they said you could link to your youtube channel that would be a great place to host all these videos I think that would be a good spot to have them all on one channel For pre-recorded video, should you delay publishing until the tour, um, or does it matter? Um, if you're going to be pre-recording videos, I think you could record them now and get them out there. I think there is a deadline to submit to Big Medium um, in the next couple of days. I wish I knew. I think it might be November first or second, um, but I'll have to get back to you on that. Uh, November 1st at midnight. So you have a few days to work on this, at least the weekend. And um, yeah. Yeah, Carol also is asking about collaboration with other artists and doing some kind of Zoom studio chat. I think that's also a really nice idea. Um, I'd love to see lots of those actually. That's a great idea. If people want to kind of self-organize discussions among artists, that'd be really fun. Yeah, and you could use each other's email list to publicize and get more interest. Yeah. Yeah, because that's something that, um, you know, also artists doing studio visits with other artists is something that um, is, I always love 
to be there when when it's artists who are actually really engaging with one another's work in addition to critics or curators or historians um, they tend to have a different kind of eye um, ask different kinds of questions and mm -hmm. it, that's wonderful also yeah alicia if you don't want to use zoom um whatever you're comfortable with um if you've ever done facebook live or instagram live i would choose one of those um maybe do a practice run just so you know uh, what interaction is like but yeah that would be a good choice because uh, people seem to be always on there and, and you might be able to catch people at a time when they might not be able to get on a zoom Uh, having a microphone is definitely advised uh, unless you're in a really kind of uh, unless you're in an, in an environment that uh, sounds really great, which is not likely. Um, if you ju you just need to test it out, um, too much echo can be very distracting for people. Um, again, I recommend headphones or just a, a cheap microphone off of Amazon that has good reviews. I don't know about Adobe Spark as um, an acceptable platform. Um, I think you want a, a channel that people are familiar with. So if you have followers on Instagram, um, that would be a good place for your pre-recorded video, Facebook, um, even your website, you can host, you can embed videos directly on your website that you've created. Um, but then also posting to YouTube and embedding from YouTube would be a good choice. Yeah, a lot of artists are using Instagram and social media in really interesting ways where it, it can be also more spontaneous rather than like a kind of pre-recorded video that you sort of produce. It could also just be a spontaneous like posting on your stories, walking around your studio or talking about a new work in progress or showing a time lapse of a work in progress if that's something that is relevant to what you do or um, you know, talking about artists that inspire you or other ideas that inspire you. These are all kind of cool things that give people a little sneak peek into your into your work. Yeah, that's something I meant to mention as time lapses. It's really easy to film with your phone, and um, and then with you know, a basic um, editing software on your phone, you can add you could add a voiceover of yourself talking about the process and what's happening through each step of the process, and um, there's some some approachable editing software that can make things easy. Um, another practical thing that I had wanted to mention um, is regarding photography, people visiting your studio and taking like the photographs I showed in the first slide. I, I always ask people when I'm doing studio visits whether they're comfortable with me taking images of their work or of them being in the images. And I always also ask, you know, I think I would always recommend for people who do do social media to make sure you um, ask the person. Um, and as an artist, it's always, um, you can't necessarily assume that people will kind of abide by that best practice. So if you have strong feelings about um, people taking images of your work or hearing them, you should tell them. Um, and, you know, cause some artists are totally love it gets exposure or, you know, they're cool with the behind the scenes and other people are not, and that's totally up to you. Yeah, some people are asking about the uh, approachable video software, iMovie. Um, I haven't used it in years, but I remember it being, I'm sure it's even more user-friendly now. Uh, you can import from your phone from videos you already have, and then I think you can record voiceover, or add music if you wanted. Um, if, I, if I think of any others. I'll, I'll make sure to, to talk about them. Does anybody have any specific questions about, you know, any other specific questions about their situation? Any way to unify studio tour engagement beyond the hashtag? Any Instagram stickers or tentpole events that we can all rally around? 
would love to drive a unified discoverability using all channels. That's a good idea as well. Aaron, do you have thoughts? I don't. Um, Is that something that big media organizes, uh, kind of hashtagging for I people I in the East? I would imagine so, but. Yeah. Um, Cheyenne's asking, would Zoom be too low quality for hosting a social distance chat? With another artist in front of work um it tends not to be the greatest quality video or audio but uh, it's really what you're comfortable with and if you've used zoom then i think it's a great option um you could record that and then post it online afterwards I yeah it's, it's a great option it's not that i love it but i've done lots and lots of zoom studio visits and they're fine yeah yeah, they work. The cool thing uh, about, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna say the cool thing about doing studio visits or kind of normalizing virtual studio visits because virtual or, or telephone visits have always been a part of curatorial practice as well. But um, the cool thing about kind of normalizing it is that you can really speak with people all over the place. And that's not something that we really took for granted before. So I would also encourage you to like, think about who you might want to talk to that maybe they don't necessarily live in Austin and you could reach out to them and, and ask, you never, there's no harm in asking someone. Uh, I was asking about the difference between posting your video to Vimeo versus YouTube. Um, the advantages to Vimeo is usually the quality uh, is better. And if you're going to embed on your website, um, I use Vimeo on my website to, to embed videos. And um, it is a paid service if you end up using it a lot. Uh, the advantage to YouTube is that there's a community there. And if people are searching for um, people are, are already on YouTube and searching for studio visits or types of artwork. You can do hashtags and tags and um, people might discover you on YouTube, whereas the, the uh, community on Vimeo isn't nearly as, as large. Yeah, I think the alternative to having a fishbowl in your studio um, the way to do that digitally would probably be sign up for your newsletter um, or if you're on Instagram, have people uh, submit questions or, um, or follow you and then you can, uh, through your following, you can announce events and, um, and other things you want to tell your audience. This question here about what doesn't make for a good studio tour video and uh, what won't land well. I have a couple of thoughts, but Aaron, why don't you start? I think if you're, you know, filming yourself walking around, if it's really shaky footage, if the audio is bad, uh, if it's aimless and long, I think all those things would be very distracting. And um, um, you just want to stay on topic and, and try to make it simple. Yeah, that's exact. I mean, I don't have any technical expertise at all, so I couldn't answer any of that, but I would say keep it short and sweet, kind of to the point. Um, not that there is a, uh, that kind of goes against what I've been saying all, all along. It's not that you have to have a point, but you just don't want to be too wandering and meandering where you'll lose people. I think whether it's recorded or live, I mean, just encourage people, um, you know, at the beginning, middle, and end to follow you, sign up for your newsletter, because that's going to be the way that you can continue engagement with them. Whatever channels you're, you're promoting, make sure that they know about it. You can put it, if it's live, put it in the chat box. Make sure they go to your website and, and follow you. I like um, the suggestion, too, about being inclusive of children. Um, yeah. Great thought. I think that's awesome. I have a two-year-old and his attention is not existent for very many things, but um, but I think it'd be it would be it would be awesome to be able to share um, content with children. I did a studio visit one time with an artist um, 
who talked about doing an exhibition for children where everything was exhibited, you know, low, like on a child sideline and the kinds of content that are um, that kids would be interested in. And I always loved that idea. I wish we could. Um, I wish we could have people talking because I'd also like to hear from other people about their experiences with studio visits and whether people have had any particularly great ones or particularly bad ones and, and what that was. Um, for me, I've never had any particularly bad ones. I've just had ones that are were a little bit less enthusiastic. Um, I think that like when an artist is really excited to talk about their work and really, um, you know, willing to engage with somebody else about it in an open-ended way that um, is exploratory, that's really a, the, the essential thing that makes for a wonderful studio visit. And other times artists might be shy, um, which is okay. Um, but maybe shy to the extent that they don't feel comfortable really opening up about their work. And um, that, while it's understandable, um, is something that can be challenging as a visitor because um, a lot of visitors too aren't, com aren't comfortable doing studio visits or haven't done very many of them, don't know what they're for, um, maybe totally um, just new really to engaging around art at all. might have lost you. Well, one thing I was going to add is, uh, does anybody have any, any stories or any um, particularly positive interactions that they've had with studio visits? Uh, there's a technical question. Is there a way to format video for both a website and Instagram? Can you do landscape for IGTV? Um, it's kind of challenging to format for both widescreen and Instagram. You really have to crop in if you're trying to do both. So you record wide or whatever. Um, I, I would really try to choose one, but you can always embed on your website vertically if you choose to do that. Um, or you could go somewhere in between, in between to make a square video. Um, yeah, I mean, when you, when you've done East, uh, and you're in a hotspot location, um, hundreds of people can come through your studio, sometimes thousands and trying to be open. And after answering the same question over and over, I'm curious if, if people have any, uh, any, any stories around that. Hey, Hi. sorry. That's another reality of, of the digital <laughs> world, which is sometimes you just get dropped out of the universe unexpectedly. So now I'm on my phone because I've lost my internet. This way it goes. No worries. I was asking people to submit, you know, submit some stories in the chat box about positive interactions they've had during East or West and what, what specifically made them positive or, or engaging or impactful for you. Yeah, I'd love to hear that. I haven't seen it. I haven't found a specific channel for successful uh, studio visits online. There, I think they're still, you know, emerging right now. When I was researching this for the for this webinar, um, I found a few here and there. There are some art organizations and museums who are hosting, just like Big Medium, hosting events and they're hosting uh, studio visits, uh, but they're more kind of coffee chat style uh, mm -hmm. videos. Uh, but look at some of the more well known. Um, museums and galleries they're hosting some on their channels
Yeah, I think one of the challenging things about doing um, video-based presentations of your work or online studio visits in general is that it's hard to um, it's hard to get close to the kind of um, spontaneity and um, just playfulness that is possible more possible with a live studio visit. Um, not that it's impossible, but I think that um, again, like the the human connection element is really as important as the presentation of your work because that is something that's going to really stick with people. You know, I might do a studio visit with somebody and I don't have a, an opportunity to show their work maybe for years or from a different city, but I'll remember, I'll remember the interaction and I'll remember their work. Um, and, you know, some, if I were to share like specific stories of some of my favorite studio visits, what makes them my favorite is not only that the artists are awesome and that their ideas are really interesting to me, but um, also as a studio visit, usually it's because there's some kind of fun, unexpected um, element that is kind of couched in there too. So um, thinking about how you can also engage people on a human level and um, let your personality come through, you know? Yeah, I think that's a great point that content is is more important than the, and then you know making it look flashy um, really think about what you're trying to share with people um, Peggy my mother said she did East for years love the interaction with guests although some people walked into the studio and immediately walked out you never know um, another person asked what what to do if nobody shows up to your zoom how to how to handle that gracefully I think if, if nobody shows up, even if one person shows up, then you carry on and, and engage with them. If nobody shows up, try to schedule another one and just try to get people to, to be there. I saw a question. Um, go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say Kevin recommended Adobe Rush. I think that you can use that on your phone and your computer. Um, but it's a mobile tool for making video and audio and social media videos at different ratios. So I think that's a great advice um, is to look into Adobe Rush. Uh, Someone, yeah, are there yeah. any common mistakes? Someone was asking, are there common mistakes to avoid, Aaron? Yeah, I mean, as we mentioned, I think shaky cam you know the technical stuff is shaky cam bad audio uh, dark, you know quote, loud uh, echoey environment um, bad lighting is really uh, can be a common mistake so just making sure you're well lit or your work is well lit um, but from a content perspective i think you know uh, a, a long super long video or aimless um, aimless stories I think uh, trying to hone in what you're you know ahead of time what you want to say I mean you mentioned you haven't had any particularly bad studio visits can you think of some things that might have turned you off me? Yeah. Oh, um, <laughs> sorry for asking me as if there were several other participants <laughs> in our conversation. <laughs> um, uh, no, honestly, I, like I said, I think that like some have just been sort of less engaging, but I've never really had any studio visits that have been horrible. I mean, never had in anyone be I think what would be bad is if just somebody was rude on either side if somebody was dismissive or you know mm, braggadocious or I don't know some some kind of just like human characteristics uh but I've never really had any of that um 
Yeah. But I mean, I guess on the other side, like I was saying before, the kind of my favorite studio visits, those that are kind of couched in some uh, something additional, some kind of like extra human thing um, is, is usually, and, and again, I think this is going to be the thing that's hardest to reach digitally. Um, but it's usually about, you know, like sharing things about yourself um, in, a, in addition to, and that, you know, generally these things always also inform your, your work, but, um, you know, like I, I shared an image of an artist who was a video artist and a photographer, um, and he was playing his grandmother's organ, you know, that was in his living room, because he's also a musician, and part of his practice has to do with, um, you know, like working, doing collaborations with like avant-garde musicians, and so That's music, cool. you know, he had a huge record collection, and um, instruments and he plays guitar for a minute. Um, he had a, a young daughter who was sort of in and out and, um, or like, you know, a studio visit with some wonderful artists in, in Lima in Peru and started off normal studio visit at their, at their studio. And because they work in um, concept, more conceptually oriented practice, um, they were, we were looking at a kind of PowerPoint presentation so the digital format is also not necessarily new. Um, and then afterwards, you know, they invited me back to have dinner at their house. And so the conversation kind of continues and you develop a kind of human relationship. So um, I think that if there is a way in which, and all of that is really difficult in this moment of social distancing, but if there's a way in which you can, you, if you find yourself kind of um, spontaneously making a connection with somebody who's visiting your studio. I think it's nice always to send a follow-up. Um, you know, if you have a record of who's there and you're able to record um, email addresses, you can always send a follow-up, just email. Thank you for visiting. I enjoyed talking with you about yada, yada. Um, follow-ups are great too, to share images of your work. Maybe you've shown some images on a PowerPoint that you want somebody to be able to access later, or if you make time-based work, video or performance or something that is too long to really show in that, um, in that uh, visit, you could always share it, a Vimeo link and people can watch your work later. So um, these kinds of follow-ups that also help to flesh out, um, flesh out the visit um, are, are good. That's great. One idea I just had is if you are nervous about, you know, just filming yourself alone in your in your studio, you could ask a friend or someone who's purchased your work in the past to either join you on Zoom or in person and, and kind of interview you. And, and somebody who's familiar with your work might be able to pull out questions that you hadn't thought about. Um, and it doesn't necessarily necessarily have to be improv. It can be you, know, you can discuss the questions ahead of time, but having you in in conversation could help if, if you're not feeling comfortable or um, mm -hmm. just as an, as an alternative idea to you just telling telling stories or, or your inspiration. Yeah. That's a great idea. Um, question, uh, are there art forms that are better suited to digital visits? Yeah. Um, I think not better suited, but you just have to tailor your, what, you're, what you're doing to your art form. Um, without going into each one, I think, I think there is an effective way to, to capture and, and tell the story. But um, I think you just have to think through the, the, how you communicate that. Yeah, I think as well. And then also just remembering kind of what I said earlier about um, how, you know, more physical mediums, paintings, sculpture, ceramics, and things like that, um, textiles. Um, do not come through in online formats, they appear flat, digitized. So if that is the medium, you know, if you're working in a medium which materiality is important, then remembering that that's not gonna, your, your visitor can't um, know that. So you have to find some way to show them, you know, whether that's through de detail images or, you know, even touching and explaining other mediums too, like photography is not always um, 
you might think that that's a medium that would be that you wouldn't lose a whole lot online, but that's not always true, um, especially if you're working in analog formats or if you're printing at um, especially large or small scales or if the way that you install it is important or all, there can be all kinds of different variables. So I wouldn't really take for granted the online format for any kind of medium unless it is one that is digitally born and meant to be viewed online. Well, we'll probably wrap up in just a few, in a few minutes. Uh, if anybody has any last questions, we're happy to answer. Yeah, we really do hope this was helpful for everyone and um, feel free to reach out to me. I'll put my email address in the chat box. I can't add my phone in this phone. Uh, I don't think I can. I'll ask the medium to. Yeah. Uh, Penn's asking, can you discuss the points of why they are important or what the outcome should be? That's a great question. Um, it, I, if I were to say, I think people want to know stories or, or who the artist is for behind the work, um, unless you want the work to completely stand alone. Um, uh, Robin, what do you think the outcome should be? Yeah, I think, like like I said, to start off, there is no one outcome. It really all depends on what what you hope to get out of it, what somebody else hopes to get out of it. There's no one way to do anything and there's no one outcome. I don't think there should be just one outcome. Um, there was another aspect to that question though that I, I was going to address. I think if you, you know, a lot of people would ideally want the outcome to be selling work, but uh, you know, the best way to do that is to tell the story behind it and, and give some context for why you created it. And I think, I think that yeah. would be a motivation for it. Yeah. The other aspect of the question, I think, is basically why do we do this? Um, and uh, yeah, again, like I said um, at the beginning, um, I think that you, you can think about the why as like, what can somebody, or this could also help, you know, shape what you, the kind of content that you present is um, why would somebody want to come and speak to you instead of just looking on your website or, um, you know, if reading an art review or, or something. So it's really about um, being able to hear from you directly, being able to engage with you as a human, as well as an, as an artist, um, you know, being able to ask questions and, um, and learn about your process, uh, to see behind the scenes. People would love to see like what your studio looks like or your working space. Um, people love to see really new works that haven't been exhibited yet. People love to see um, works in progress and, and really just ideas that you're just starting to mull over. Um, all of that stuff is something that you won't get unless you're really speaking to the artist directly. And I think that is a good way to kind of um, guide your presentation. Yeah, and as Aaron said, I think people are curious about the materials you use to create the end product. And so- Yeah, yeah, your process, what materials you're using, absolutely. Well, thank you everyone for attending. Please do reach out to either of us with any questions. And, um, and we wish you the best of luck and enjoy the tour this year, the virtual tour this year. Yeah, thank you everyone. Bye.